Hey everybody and welcome to this video. My name is Janis and in the background you can already hear the type of sound that I'm going to show you in this video, which I made with Ableton Live's Analog Synth. It's some type of heavily 80s inspired bright pad sound and I was especially thinking of like the Juno type sounds for this one. And lately I've really enjoyed doing those videos where I try to think of some classic synth sound and use the analog synth and try to get as close as possible because in my opinion it's a super great practice to learn your gear to try getting close to a sound that you like because you can't copy it of course because those are different instruments but instead of just thinking immediately okay I need some other synth it's really great to see how close you can get with what you have and it just expands your knowledge about the synthesizer and also your ideas of how you can use it. And as I mentioned, I made some more videos like this already and you can find them in the info box so you can consider watching them after watching this video. And this being said, let's just jump right into it. So of course, first we need to load the analog synth or you can also try with another synth. It just matters that it has kind of similar settings because this is like typical classic analog synthesizer concept. And I've just loaded in some short chord sequence so I don't have to play all the time and we can just listen to what we did to the sound with this example. So let's quickly listen to those chords. And yeah, this way of course it sounds kind of dull. And there's one thing that we really need here because the Juno synthesizers had this extremely, extremely charismatic chorus. And once I also had a chance to play a bit on some real one and this is like some major part of the sound. And so already I'm going to load in some kind of chorus but in Ableton I really like to use the delay for it. Um, Maybe you've seen some of my other videos, but I just never feel so comfortable with the Ableton chorus. It sounds too, I don't know, there's something too digital or something too uh, obvious about it. And I always find the chorusing effects I managed to create with the delay just smoother. I'll already put it here, but we are going to look at the settings later. I just wanted to mention that it's not possible without any effects because especially the Junos had this kind of very very charismatic chorus effect that we need. So let's start with the oscillators. I use both of them although actually the Juno wouldn't even allow to use two sawtooth waves. You could add some square wave and also you had some sub oscillator so you could have three different sources in total. And we're going to slightly detune the second oscillator and I made another pad video about some profit type pad and you would think Actually, why is it possible to emulate both pads? And I was surprised how small differences can really change the sound of the whole pad because for example this one I had detuned at 0.09 at the profit one it was 0.13 but it was a very different sound already. And um, I mean also then looking at some other settings that you will see in a bit but uh, yeah just sharing this that I find this interesting how small things can really change the sound. So now we have detuned them a little. They sound more exciting, but still, bleh, it's some kind of super cold um, and yeah, directionless sound. So let's look at the envelopes. So for the amplitude envelope, I liked some attack of kind of 500, 600 milliseconds. So you have the kind of short lift in the beginning and we're going to increase this by using the filter envelope as well. Then the sustain can be a little higher than 50% and the decay, I'd like to, I liked to make very long here, which will look a little odd, but I just like those pads you can play very longly. And it's nice to have a very gradual and slow decay in case you press those chords a little longer. And the release I also had quite long because I didn't like the sound when it would die off so quickly and it's nicer if it kind of gets picked up somewhere when the next chord is triggered. So yeah, this sounds better already. But we need, really need to use the filter envelope in order to bring some character to it. And let's bring this one down a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, I think like 50. And a little bit of resonance. And the reason I bring this down so much is because I'm going to drive the filter a lot. And this is also something I mentioned in those other videos that I really like this ASIM 3 setting because it drives the filter more. Oh, now it's actually almost non-visible, I'll show you a second. Um, you have to the decay make the same as with the amp like maximum 
The attack this time is a little longer, like 700 something. And the sustain can be around here, that's fine. And the release also, I like to make a little longer than the amplitude release. So um, it, the, the kind of cool down part of the whole sound is a little more gradual. And now you see that the sound is very dull because we've cut off all the high frequencies. But I did this because now I want to use this drive setting because uh, you can see that compared to, no, it was on Sim 1. I mean, it gets louder, but also this allows you to get more overtones and more character out of the filter, which is something I really like with analog. And that, in my opinion, really helps to enhance the character and makes the whole thing a little more fun. And here I was doing it kind of extensively by using 7-something. And you see now what this does to the sound. All of a sudden, it gained an excitement and doesn't sound so dull anymore. And yeah, I feel like this is, if you haven't done this yet, I really encourage you to play around with here, driving it a little more. And you can always kind of balance. So you could say, okay, I want, I like it more if here the frequency is more open, so I drive the filter less. Or I like it if here the frequency is lower, this way I can drive the filter more. Just get an idea how it works, but I find this very cool and usually it makes the sound more exciting. And I also like to add a little bit of keyboard tracking. This means that the lower notes have a little less of the filter envelope and the higher notes a little more. This way you add a little bit of motion to the sound. And also what I like here is that you can add some modulations to the resonance and I like to apply a little bit of the envelope, like 0 0.8, because it made it sound a little more 80s like and I felt like this Juno also had a lot of resonant things going on all the time so um, yeah I really feel like this adds a lot of additional character to the whole sound and makes it sound more like you're in the 80s again and something I really liked and also just discovered recently so it's really worth checking all your modulation options here and also if you play it's always nice to lower a bit the amplitude velocity amount because otherwise it reacts very strongly to how hard you press the notes. I always have it at like uh, below one because otherwise there can be some unnatural jumps but this is just something you have to figure out for yourself but four for me for synthesizer sounds is always way too high. By the way if you happen to enjoy this video I'd be super thankful if you could take one quick second to click the like button since this always really helps to show the video to a couple of more people and since we're at the subject you're also warmly invited to take a look at my channel and consider subscribing to it because you can find more tutorials like this and will also find more tutorials like this in the future. So I'm kind of happy with that now, but we can still add more detune or just kind of modulations. And the vibrato is really cool. I usually start trying it at 6 hertz. And here for this example, I also stayed at 6 hertz. And then you dial it in to see where it sounds good. Here I like it more subtle and I always use a little bit of delay and attack to clean the first initial hit. No, this I don't like for this one. Somehow for this sound the vibrato is just some slight addition, but I usually like to drive it more with other sounds, but here I don't feel like it adds so much. So we're going to add the other type of modulation. Now finally, with the type of chorus and it's just really fun because you want to make sure that you use the time setting, the blue one, uh, unlink those and have like 5 and 10 milliseconds of the delay time and then you want to make sure this is at zero so we can slowly dial it in. Bring this to about 1 hertz and then you want to increase this one to about 70 something because now with this rate we have some kind of additional LFO that modulates the delay time and this creates this kind of chorusing effect. Maybe a little bit of feedback. Let's uh, also make this a little narrower. We can fine tune later and slowly dial this in to see what happens. Yeah, 
like it wider. You really see how this adds character to the sound. I mean, obviously it's not a Juno chorus, but we kind of get some 80s vibe and from this point on now you can kind of tweak it. Maybe it's too bright, you can play with the filter again and the resonances and the uh, drive amount, but this is some cool starting point to get into this kind of 80s pad type direction. You can also, I mean you don't have to use this kind of, in the beginning this short swell, you can also go for some direct sound if you just uh, take away the attack time. Also super cool. But yeah, this way it kind of reminds me of this Juno sound and I hope you like this video. If you have any questions, just be invited to drop them in the comments. I always gladly speak about whatever I'm doing inside my videos. And if you liked the video, also please take one quick second to click the like button if you haven't already, since this always helps a lot to show this video to a couple of more people. And also, again, you're warmly invited to subscribe to my channel because you can find more videos like this and they will also come in the future. One last mention also that I have a Skillshare page where I offer like some more in-depth tutorials on music production. And I always have a link down below in the description where you can try it one month for free and see if it's for you. Also, there are other great classes and also a warm invitation to check that out. Apart from that, I just wish you inspiration with whatever it is that you create and really hope to see you soon again at this channel. Bye.